everybody. This is Natalie from Power Moon Tarot. Welcome to your reading. Today's reading is a subscriber request reading and um, uh, someone had left a comment. What is keeping me from finding my soulmate or true love? And so that is what today's reading is going to be about. And I'm excited to do this reading for you because I think, you know, it's great self-discovery, whether you want to find a true love or a soulmate right now, or whether you're perfectly content where you're at, we can always work on ourselves, which I think brings us closer to our true love and our soulmate. And, um, it's, you know, <laughs> Life is a long journey. It's a journey to love, isn't it? It is a journey. And I certainly have had my own ups and downs in relationships. I've been married and divorced. I've, you know, had my heart broken by people. I've broken hearts. You know, we've done, done the gamut. When I was younger, I was very detached and I didn't want to fall for anyone. You know, by my mid thirties, I was a bit more, <laughs> I was a bit softer by my mid thirties. And at that time I was kind of ready to fall in love. And I ended up, you know, getting divorced in a very hurtful situation. So, you know, finding love and, and today I'm happy to report that I have a great relationship and we've been together for almost a year now. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's a journey guys to find love. And, <laughs> and sometimes we're in those hermit phases where, we're needing to work on ourselves and we're needing personal growth and we're needing to go within and we're needing to do some healing, etc. Oh my gosh, how beautiful. There's a butterfly <laughs> right outside my window. And it just was sitting there on my windowsill, opening and closing its wings as I was talking to you guys, right? Opening and closing its wings. It's so funny how spirit works. Earlier today, I was at the lake and I saw geese, squirrel, monarch butterflies, dragonflies, I mean, you name it. And one of the geese there actually like looked into my eyes <laughs> and got so close to me. It was such an interesting experience. If you wanna uh, learn about my lake adventures and see my impromptu readings by the lake, you can follow me on my TikTok account, which um, in my description box below, there is a link to my TikTok as well as my Instagram if you want to follow me on either platforms. And I am being a lot more active on TikTok than I used to be. So I'm excited about that and just a lot going on, guys. And finally, if you haven't checked out my other channel, Light of Ascension Tarot, I just posted a reading this afternoon, which is more of a mediumship reading and connecting with your loved one on the other side, okay? So if you're interested in doing that or looking at my other channel, link to my other channel will be in the description box and we are gonna go ahead and get into it. There won't be any extended readings today. So let's go ahead and do it. Maybe later tonight if I do another video, but not in this reading. <laughs> so let's go ahead and get into it, everybody. Pile number one, if you like the yellow tea light, you will choose pile number one. For pile number two, I have the purple tea light. And for pile number three, I have the white tea light. So that's yellow, purple, or white. And you can go right to the description box to find your pile. And you know, if you're interested in what decks I'm reading with, I'm reading with the Millennium Toth for pile number one. I'm reading with the straight up classical Toth Tarot for pile two. And for pile three, I'm reading with the Lightseer's deck. So if you're interested in those decks, and you know, funny thing about this Toth deck is I got it in, I think I was about 20 or 21 when I got this deck. So it's been around, it's been around for a long time. And um, it's so small, like the cards are, are a little bit smaller but I've had it for a super long time, okay? So we are going to go ahead and get into the piles and we are gonna get into your reading. Thank you for the viewer that suggested this question because I think it's a question a lot of us may have been curious about at various times in our lives. And it is a great you know, self-discovery, self-knowledge type of a question. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's do it. 
Okay. <sighs> Pile number one, welcome to your reading. You chose the yellow tea light. And today's reading is called, What is Keeping You from Finding Your Soulmate or Your True Love? And this was a subscriber request video. So we are gonna go ahead and get into it today. No extended reading for this reading, but hopefully we're gonna get some really amazing messages to help everyone move forward and understand their path a little bit more. So let's channel it in. Spirits, angels, and guides, please connect me in and align me to my beautiful pile number ones as we channel in the energy, please, and thank you. I'm also getting pile number two, pile number one. So if you felt drawn to pile number two and thought, ah, oh, maybe I'll listen to that one too, I feel there's a confirmation here from Spirit saying, yeah, go ahead and listen to it. <laughs> It's so funny because I just got some pain in my left nostril of my nose. Interesting. Just like a little, little sharp pain. Almost like that little pain when you have a bruise or that moment when you get your nose pierced. I have my nose pierced and kind of that like shocking, like facial piercing moment where you're like, ooh, <laughs> you know, and you want to pull back, but you can't. You just, because you, you don't want to do that while you're getting pierced, obviously. Um, cool. Pile number one. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get into it for you guys. Okay, right out of the gate, I'm getting the name Sasha or names that start with an S or sound like Sasha, maybe in another language. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it. Let's work the energy. That's a really cool name for those of you, or maybe you have a pet with that name or a family member or a friend, but let's do it, pile number one. Let's find out what is holding you back right now. And of course, tarot is for the present moment only. So just because, you know, in your present moment, whenever you're watching this video for the present moment only, so it, you know, this may not apply like a week from now or a month from now or a year from now, right? But let's look at it right now. We have efficiency, okay. And it looks like here that she's holding a pentacle and she's very focused. So let me get the oracle cards out and then we'll look at them all at once. We have number 19. <laughs> yeah, independence and self-sufficiency are necessities to you. You are extremely capable in life and work and aren't afraid to take big risks to achieve the life you deserve. I am a pioneer. Okay, pile number one. <laughs> You're very independent. And this reminds me of the nine of pentacles, of course, which is, you know, like a lot of people describe the Nine of Pentacles as being very single and independent and very efficient, doing your own thing. And the funny thing about the Nine of Pentacles is, well, it's not funny, well, not funny, haha, but interesting, is that um, the Nine of Pentacles is a Venus and Virgo card, and Virgo is in detriment in Venus, or Venus is in detriment in Virgo. So, um, yeah, so and a lot of times people are like, oh, the Nine of Pentacles is like a spinster card or it's like a, you know, but then a lot of people will say, oh, it's a pre-empress card. It's just beautiful and single and doing your own thing. But I mean, those are pretty surface level meanings for the Nine of Pentacles. And, you know, the Nine of Pentacles to me is also like, you know, what I'm building needs to have personal meaning for me. What I'm building and what I'm doing is important to me and it has personal meaning to me, right? And that's why we put effort and energy into it. So we have the tower here as well. So, you know, you may have experienced relationships as, you know, interrupting and I can relate when I was younger, pile number one, I didn't, you know, wanna really get too deep into relationships because I was really fueled by my own sense of, you know, independence and I need to go this road alone and I need to, you know, I want to be the captain of my own destiny type of thing. And <clears throat> yeah, and we have card number 19 here. So some people, you know, maybe relatively young or maybe you just have that youthful attitude of, you know, here today, gone tomorrow, because with the tower, all we really have is the present moment. That's all we have. And somebody brought to my attention the other day, um, a, not just somebody, but a very cool teacher of the tarot who, she lives in Egypt and she teaches live from the pyramids and it's really cool. Anyway, but she was talking about how the tower doesn't have any doors. 
you know, it's, it's up or out type of thing. And um, for some of you, you may have been very busy building your careers and, you know, putting effort and energy into something. It's almost like an Olympian, right? And this almost looks like an Olympic medal to me where it's like, I have to be focused and disciplined. I have to watch what I'm eating. I'm training for something, whether that is a physical training and a mental or emotional training, but I need to be super efficient and on point for what I'm doing. Maybe you started your own business. Maybe you are a very young entrepreneur, right? Whatever it is, or maybe you're proving yourself in a in a big career, you know, move here. But, you know, circumstances haven't exactly been conducive to, you know, having that type type of relationship. Now, some of you may be wondering, are people threatened by my success or et cetera? Yeah, I think a little bit with the tower because the tower is Mars energy, right? So you guys could have like, you know, Venus in Virgo or Mars in Virgo. I have Mars in Virgo, so I know how it is, pile number one. You know, you can't quite let it up. You can't quite let up. It's very intense, you know? When your mind is set on something and you're focused, it's very, very intense and very like, this is right, this is wrong, and you know, that type of thing, very kind of a grandstanding type of Mars. Um, or just, I'm gonna keep working and working and working until I get this right. So could some people feel a little bit threatened by that? Could masculine energy be a little bit threatened by that? Yeah, sure, be a little intimidated, yeah. Yeah, pile number one. That's not the whole story though. Let's see what else here, because the right person's gonna love that. We have spider and create. So, you know, you may have had a lot of harsh, you know, downfalls in some of your relationships thinking, my God, you know, um, I'm also getting the name Evelyn right now, the names that start like E, you might've had some very, very like harsh wake up calls, like damn, you know, and you're like, you know what, I'm just going to go as, as the singer of no, Gwen Stefani of no doubt would say, I'm walking in a spider web. So leave a message and I'll call you back. Okay. And, um, you might've, and I feel like a lot of this kind of forceful destruction, this crazy kind of eye opening, you know, when like cracking thunder and lightning, a lot of this has been just fuel for your creative spirit. And, you know, you're a very unique person. You're not, you may be like a woman, but you're not like every other woman, right? Or you're a man, but you're not like every other, you're just something a little bit different, okay? Something a little bit unique, something a little bit different. And um, not everyone is going to be like suited to your energy, okay? And some people may feel a little bit threatened by you. We have possessive, you're clinging on to someone or something too tightly, learn to let go, love has no ownership, everyone has free will. Well, the tower will teach you that. <laughs> if you're clinging on to something, the tower will come and show you, uh, you know, and then when there's destruction, there's rebuilding, there's creation, there's starting over. And, you know, when I see this spider too, I'm reminded of my nickname in high school, which was the Black Widow. Okay, so, you know, that kind of femme fatale type of energy may be a little bit alive and well here. Um, but, you know, spirit is talking about possessive type of energy. And, you know, I, I don't feel you guys are possessive over the people that you're with. I feel that yourself, you're very possessive over yourself. You're self-possessed, okay? And it may be hard to kind of, people may have a hard time kind of getting in and seeing how they would have a sort of invite into you in a way, you know? And I don't mean that in a sexual way. I mean that in a, like, you know, and an, a window into your soul. You know, a lot of times the tower, some in some versions it has windows, but other times I noticed, though it doesn't even look like it has windows, you know? <laughs> so a window into your soul, pile number one, fearful, a learned behavior that can be unlearned, also low vibrating feeling that creates limitations for you and future happiness. So, 
you know, there could be this sense with the tower too of having relationships in the past just be completely kind of wiped out of your life, pile number one, or just pulled out from you from underneath the rug and just wondering, you know, mm, like, I don't know if I want to go through that again. That's a whole lot of mess. And I don't know if I'm, I don't know. I don't know if I want to go through. I don't know if I want to do that again. You're very focused and pioneering. So the energy of fearfulness, because you don't seem fearful to me, pile number one. I think it's more like, you know, I don't know if I want to kind of invest and do all of that and get all into it just to have it crumble underneath me. You know, that's understandable. We have earth talking about crumbling underneath you in the tower, okay? And yeah, again, a lot of earth sign energy here, Virgator, Virgo, Vir, Virgo, Virgo Taurus. I almost made up a new sign, Virgo Taurus, Virgo Taurus and Capricorn. We have the element of earth. So some sort of st safety and stability and consistency in times of great upheaval and change, you know, would be, would be good, right? But I also think with the tower energy, it's like we're, it's more instinctual. It's more like boom, boom, boom in the moment, right? And earth is very, is a heavier energy. It's like a heavy metal or something, you know, it's like heavier energy. So kind of pulling down, right? Which isn't a bad thing when you're trying to ground yourself. But I also feel like you guys may have lived your life on the fly a little bit where it's kind of hard to kind of root into that sort of security. We have rise to new rise to challenges as a new path opens eclipse in Gemini. Okay, so some of you guys, we could have Virgo and Gemini energy here. Mars is highlighted with the Tower Earth signs, um, but you know a new path is opening for you. And whether you want to create something new and go down that path um, is going to be up to you. And I feel you're going to be presented with another way to sort of look at things or a new way to go. Now, I do think as focused and pioneering and interesting as you are, pile number one, like boredom is, you may get, uh, you know, the idea of like being bored or something. You know, with the tower, we need some type of excitement, but also stability, right? How do we reconcile these two, right? How do we reconcile that? And, um, you know, like it might be hard to make up your mind sometimes. It's like this way, that way, or that way, right? And you may get into negotiations with yourself saying, well, you know, this might work. I'll try this. And then being like, oh, no, I don't, I don't really want to go. I'm not going to go, or I don't have time for that, right? And um, you also may meet some very fickle people as well that, you know, are kind of like you. They're super independent. They're into their own path. They're not really like, they're super, maybe they're training for something themselves, right? I mean, I'm saying this about you, pile number one, but you could be like, that's the energy I attract, you know? And we attract that for a reason, right? And sometimes, maybe for some of you here too, it's like, because they, those type of people can't really be attained. They can't really be like, you know, we can't really hold on to them. It's kind of, they're, they're kind of on their own path, doing their own thing, you know, two roads that never meet, two, two ships passing in the night type of thing. Um, yeah, and, and feeling like disappointed too. Like what, what in the actual fuck, you know? Um, feeling disappointed by that pile number one. And I feel like it could be confusing for you at some time. Should I meet someone who's like me or should I meet someone who's totally different than me? We're gonna look at that. We have intuition. Look at areas in your life that need decisive action, okay? Yeah, you know, this Gemini energy with Earth, like taking our time to make decisions. Search your heart for the right answers, okay? Listen to the messages that come from your intuition and follow through. Search your heart, so search your soul. When you find me there, you'll search no more. Don't tell me it's not worth fighting for. Don't tell me there's nothing I want more. I would die for you, walk the line for you. I, you know, all the, all the stuff. That's a Brian Adams song and it's called Everything I Do, I Do It For You, okay? 
And um, look at you guys, look at you. Look at you in your gold gown. Again, I, we had this card the other day, maybe you're seeing it again, with um, the leopards in the background growling and you guys in your golden gown. You know, perfection, pile number one. Perfection, you are, okay, beautiful. And yeah, and, and free and wild that you are, pile number one. And um, I feel like some of you guys have an ancestor, maybe an older male or a grandfather or somebody in your family line who's, who you're like, yeah, I know they want to see me with someone nice and see me be happy and be treated with respect. And yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have card 34 here. We have card 19 and 34. So 19 to 34, for those of you that fall in that age range, could have been a real shit show for you because, well, not, a, well, the tower. It could have been a real shit show or it just could have been a lot of ups and downs in your relationships, whether either someone was clinging to you, you were clinging to them, one was afraid of the other one leaving, the other one was clinging, just that kind of vibe, okay? We have B in community. You are a powerful creator. <laughs> Create, all right? Your work blesses everything you touch. Be open, yeah, your work here, your work is so important, it does bless everything you touch. Be open to receiving sweetness. You are the queen of abundance, pile number one. Oh, that touches my heart, it really does, pile number one. And with the yellow tea light and all that honey and all that sweetness, right? And I feel there's been a lot of like Mars, Virgo kind of energy in your life, earth sign, practical, you know, relationships, if you do have them up and down at times, you know, starting and finishing, right? Just in and out of your life type of thing. and. You know, what you guys, I feel, it's like sweetness. You know, what is community, sweetness? I'm also feeling Aquarius here too. Like, what does that mean to you? What does it mean to be in in kind of like that communal vibe where everyone is sharing, loving one another, and a new path can open for you, okay? And um, yeah, and, and I think it's kind of like, mindset in a way pile number one it's mindset for you guys a little bit here and i just want to because i asked the question earlier should pile number one meet someone like themselves that has a similar lifestyle or someone totally different what's bet what is what would be well you guys know what's best for you pile number one but let me uh let me entertain you with the cards <laughs> and see what we come up with also um you know like what was I just gonna say? I lost it. Brain fart pile number one. <laughs> I lost it, I lost it, but it'll come back to me. Okay, there's a reason why I lost it, I'm sure. But let's go ahead and see. The road less traveled or the road very much traveled? Let's see, should pile number one meet someone like themselves? Should pile number one meet someone like themselves? We have the Ten of Wands. Yeah, that's been a struggle. That's been a little bit of a struggle. I mean, at first it's like, woo, hot, passion, you know, cool, right? We see the world the same way. But, you know, there are obstacles. People are too busy. Um, ooh, that's too many cards. I just wanted two. Let's go ahead and see. Um, yeah, and I don't, the thing I don't like is the two spears down the middle with the two horses facing the opposite direction. Okay, it's like, uh, like I said, like two ships passing in the night. And I do think the energy, especially the sexual energy and the, and, and also not just the sexual energy, but understanding, you know, like your, your, how your lives are the same and how they intersect creates, you know, feelings of familiarity. But the fact, I don't like the two stakes in the middle that are facing in opposite directions. It's like attention, you know, is going one way and attention is going another way. And I'm also feeling the word tension here too. Like there is tension, okay? Um, let's go ahead. And normally we say there's tension in opposites, but here's the hermit, okay? Or meeting someone that is completely different than you, okay? I feel like, you know what? Because I see you guys as like my Virgos in this pile and the hermit energy, I think if, you, if you've been meeting people who are similar to you and don't have a lot of time and you kind of just drift apart and you're both too busy 
and you have things in common. So there's a mutual flow and an understanding, but it just doesn't work, you know, because I was pulling through you guys like Virgo, like my solo riders, my ride or die going within people. I'm going to say that let's, let's try someone that's a little bit different than you. Now I'm not saying, I think they need to be like a person that is able to be independent, able to be on their own, somebody that has done their inner work as well, and maybe someone a little bit older, maybe someone a little bit older and a little bit more serious, pile number one, maybe someone a little bit older and a little more serious, nothing wrong with that. Um, maybe someone with long hair, sexy, okay. Uh, let's see what else, let's see what else, yeah. Yeah, I'm loving the cosmic egg in the corner here too. That's awesome. And definitely. So let's see. As far as as far as pile number one, meeting someone different than them, what can you tell me about that spirit? Yeah, we have the Knight of Wands. Well, <laughs> different, different, okay, different energy. And definitely a lot more immediate, much more like straight on with you okay like paying attention to you very kind of straight on energy okay and um this could be like a leo for instance um but it's very like straight on kind of energy and fully present paying attention to you making plans being active you know taking up the taking up the responsibility for kind of reaching out and making the connection and keeping the fire burning okay and um i feel like some of you guys are like ah oh, i don't know natalie like you're like turning away but you're like i would like the sex you know <laughs> well pile number one you know that's how it goes we've got the three of wands yeah, you know, I, I like this better for you guys. I do. I like I like you guys meeting someone who can kind of put you to be the center of attention, somebody who's active, who makes plans, um, somebody who kind of brings you guys out of your shell, okay? Um, and somebody who, who actively pursues you the way that you want to be pursued. I like that, you know? Instead of going for someone that has the same type of life as you or the same lifestyle as you pile number one and you know oftentimes I don't give that advice okay I tell people like you know find someone with similar values and all of that because that really indicates longevity but you know the the amount I think I think some of the stuff you guys are basing it on is is at is more surface level. Like when you say this person is like you, it's a little more surface level, okay? I think you can meet someone that's like you, hermit energy, but approaches relationships a little bit differently than some of the people that you've been running into, okay? And um, you're gonna have to put yourself out there though, pile number one, because yeah, I can't hide in the cave forever, pile number one. You're gonna have to, you know, put yourself out there, all right? So what advice, Spirit, can you give to pile number one on their journey as far as finding their soulmate? What advice can you give to pile number one? Nine of Pentacles, there it is. There it is. And I feel like this is such, there's Venus and Virgo. This is such a confirmation for you guys. Like I said, the right person is going to understand you and appreciate you. And I love that there's like this organization of the pentacles, but in the middle there's a pink, green, and purple. And it's like a yummy surprise at the center. Okay. It's like once you get through kind of the defenses or you get through just kind of the day-to-day -day rigmarole at the center is the yummy goo, the yummy, yummy goo pile number one and what you're looking for. Okay. And this is just confirmation from spirit that you're pioneering, you're efficient, you're focused on what you do. You have a mind for, you know, organization and pointing out the details and going deeper and you may feel like sometimes, oh, it's not very sexy, okay? But guess what? The Nine of Pentacles, this hermit that you're going to meet is going to find this very, very sexy. Look at the cosmic egg with the snake wrapped around it. Very sexy. This hermit's like, oh my God, what did I just find? The Nine of Pentacles? 
Holy fucking shnikes, you know, pile number one. <laughs> yeah, and this hermit's like, ooh, I've been waiting for someone like you. I've been waiting for it, okay? So the right person is going to appreciate it. And I think when you meet people, pile number one is, you know, look for people who don't feel like reaching out and making plans is like a lot of work, okay? It, it needs, with the three of wands and the knight of wands, it's like, it should be fun. It should just kind of, they should be active, okay? They should be active for sure and very interested, all right? And asking questions and following up. And you know pile number one, you know. All right, any last things uh, that pile number one can do here, spirit, to attract their true love or their soulmate? We have the knight of pentacles, more earth energy. <laughs> this is Taurus, okay? We have Virgo Taurus, and um, we also have fire signs here too. We have Leo and Aries. So, you know, this is, this is about being patient, all right? So the Knight of Pentacles is pretty slow moving energy at times, you know? And it takes time. Love takes time, pile number one. And when the time is right, Okay, when the time is ripe is also what I see. When the time is right or ripe. In the meantime, keep working, keep plotting ahead, keep, you know, fertilizing your fields, keep, you know, pruning your branches, pile number one, and, you know, stay on course. The course that you're on and you're committed to, your own development and self-worth is very valuable. It's, it's wonderful. It's good. And um, be physical with the Knight of Pentacles. It's like, be physical, take care of yourself and um, stay on the course that you're on. You're not on the wrong path. You're on the right path. It just takes time. And you know, some of you may have went through that age 19 to 34. You may have went through that window where it was like, wah, wah, you know, and um you know, a lot of the people you might've ran into were just not, they weren't the ones. So they're just looking in the wrong direction, you know? And, and that's sometimes how it is in life, you know? And there's just like this energy of knowing our value and being patient. Okay, pile number one. So that is what I'm gonna leave you with here, my darlings. I hope that you enjoyed your reading. I certainly enjoyed doing your reading. Be patient, stay on your path, stay on your course. You're doing great. Okay. And Ooh, the 10 of cups is on the bottom of the deck. I can't leave without telling you guys that there it is. There it is. Okay. It just, you know, <laughs> it's just taking a minute. It's taking a minute. It's on the bottom of the deck. It's got to find its way out. Okay. Pile number one. So <laughs> thank you so much, my lovelies. And I hope to see you again soon. Take care. All right, let's go ahead and move into pile number two. Let's do pile number two. All righty, ring a ding ding. And let's do it, okay. Pile number two, welcome to your reading. You chose the purple tea light. Actually, it's grape, it smells grape, it's pretty cool. And um, we are, your reading today is what is keeping you from finding your soulmate or true love? This was a subscriber request. Thank you, subscriber. What a beautiful question. Because I think it just helps us bring into our awareness, our own growth and our own path and looking at life as a whole, right? And we're not coming to this question from a place of need or desperation or just like, ugh, you know, we're coming to this question with a true knowledge, with the true like wanting to know, how can I better prepare myself for this type of a connection? Okay, pile number two, so let's get into it. Spirits, angels, and guides, please connect me to my beautiful pile number twos, and let's go ahead and channel it in. All right, spirit is showing me a rabbit, or like the rabbit animal totem, and yeah, when I think of the rabbit, I think of kind of like that Gemini energy, that very kind of fast darting around, like mind kind of racing. I think of, I think, you know, in animal decks, the rabbit is represented by earth, but I tend to think of it as the air signs, like Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, or that kind of like 
nervous get up and go kind of energy, okay? But um, let's go ahead and get into it. My pile number twos. I would be remiss if I didn't miss didn't mention the Virgos. The Virgos have been coming up a lot lately. They were mentioned in pile number one as well. That to me also signifies like rabbit energy, that kind of nervous darting around and seeing what's ahead on the path, okay? So let's go ahead and get into it. I'm getting the S names like Sarah to start us out with here. So thank you for being here. Um, Almost every single Sarah that I've known has been amazing, awesome human being. So <laughs> congratulations if that is your name. And I'm also getting the P names or a name like Pablo or something like that, okay? Um, or P names, so S and P, all right? Let's go ahead and get into it for my beautiful pile number twos. Let's do it. Let's see, what is keeping pile number two? from not keeping you, but just kind of slowing down the journey here a little bit when it comes to pile number two, finding love or finding a soulmate. We have stretch. Okay, some stretch goals for you, pile number two. Needing to kind of stretch it out, maybe um, date some different kinds of people, right? Or go out with some people that you, or maybe just even stretch your own, like, you know, stretch your comfort a little bit. And most of the time I say like, you know, always be comfortable. You always wanna be comfortable, right? But, cause I'm a moon in cancer, but step out of your comfort zone a little bit, stretch yourself a little bit, stretch goals, okay? And um, yeah, and I feel, let's see what else we come up with here. We have 26, you have a desire to succeed and feel and will feel most accomplished when your work benefits others. Your intuitive awareness of what people want allows you to come up with innovative solutions to meet their needs. I am tactful. Okay, well, I can see how this would work against you a little bit, pile number two, because, I mean, there was this, also, even your tea light here, like, it, compared to some of the other ones, it kind of feels like the wick is a little worn down. And what I'm going to say here is that if you have been stretching yourself to kind of fit in for other people or you have been because you're intuitive I feel pile number two and you can kind of see what other people need so you can kind of be that chameleon and kind of you can be a chameleon and, and sort of morph into what other people need and um your intuitive awareness of what people want all right and you know give the people what they want right pile number two the problem with that is that you know, a lot of times you, if you stretch to kind of fit others' needs, you, you, we can end up to the point where it becomes more of like a tact, you know, tactful. It becomes like a strategy, okay? Tactful is more like we know the right thing to say in the right situations, which is a great thing. It's a great thing to have that sensitivity um, to others and be tactful is an amazing thing to have. But in the sense that, you know, when you kind of stretch yourself to fit other people's ideas of what they want, instead of, you know, it's kind of like it becomes like a strategy, okay? Or you're like a tactician, you know, you're a strategist, right? And instead of like really being who you are, right? Kind of stretching to fit other people. We have the world card. Yeah. So, you know, this sense of like, also, I feel you guys making other people your world, like making them, you know, like, like you're the one who needs to sort of carry this thing and it wouldn't really go anywhere without you. Okay. Or that you have to be a certain way so that others will accept you or love you. Okay, let's go ahead and see what else. We have rabbit, oh my gosh, that is so crazy, you guys. I was completely channeling the rabbit, okay? And what Spirit is saying, it says observe here, and what Spirit is saying is watch your, watch your interactions with the people in your life. If you're currently dating someone or you think back on how it is, is it fair? Is it balanced? Is it more of like, you know, cause the world is Saturn energy. So it's like, 
Are we just doing something to fill a role out of obligation or out of need? Or do we really want this connection, okay? And I feel like you guys attract a lot of people, all right? You can attract a lot of different people, but I think people all may see you a little bit different way ways, okay? Depending on who you're with. And, um, you know, kind of pulling back a little bit and observing how it is when you're with people, okay? You have a des desire to succeed, the world card, and will feel most accomplished when your work benefits others, okay? So yeah, and, and that's a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing, pile number two, but you know, in the context of romantic relationships, it can be like more of like a business transaction rather than, well, a quid pro quo, like you do this and I'll do that type of thing. And yeah, it's like the thing that I feel is kind of missing from this is, you know, you're finding innovative, innovative, innovative solutions to meet their needs. Like you're stretching to meet their needs. You're bending over backwards to meet their needs. Uh, but where in the world is like the same kind of consideration for you. Where is that, okay? We have prejudice. I knew this one was gonna come up as I was shuffling and I'm like, nobody who watches this channel is actually prejudiced, right? But you know, it was making me think of that En Vogue song from back in the day, Free Your Mind. And you know, it's talking about like, free your mind and the rest will follow right? So what if you were categorized into a group and given attributes that were false without truly knowing who you are? So in this process of like stretching to kind of meet the needs of others and to be that person, to be somebody's world, you kind of, you know, it talks about here, what if you were categorized by the person that you were with and given false attributes without them knowing who you really are, pile number two. Okay, that's a dynamic from childhood too. We have defensiveness here. Hear other people's perspectives and feelings. Shift your focus to them. It's not always about you. Well, you know, I, I feel like there's some things going on with this issue, okay? And, you know, it's all how you see things, right? It's like some people you're with may be thinking you make everything about you or that their whole world has to revolve around you because it does for you, for them. You know what I'm saying? And there's some defensiveness about this. Now, I feel you, you think it's a different scenario, pile number two, that you're the one that's kind of stretching and trying to like meet another person's needs, trying to, you know, be there for them, right? And that people have maybe like falsely accused you of trying to make everything about you. But, you know, a lot of times, I'm talking about psychological dynamics now, you know, if you're a giver and you're doing a lot for others, or you're like, I'm doing all this for you, or I did all of this, or, I, I did this because of you. Like people don't know that. They think you're just doing it sometimes because you want to do it, right? But then you turn it back on them and say, oh, da da da, right? So observe the rabbit. Like observe these dynamics in your relationships, I would say for sure. Pile number two, we have ohm, right? It gets very heavy, like going back and forth like that. And I feel in your relationships, there could have been like, you know, oh, like this is how it's gonna be in our relationship and we agree to these roles and then somebody says, well, I thought you were this way when I met you, but now you're not anymore. And why the hell did you do that, right? And the other person says, well, I thought you were that way and how could you do, right? Defensive kind of energy. Uh, you know, God rest your soul, pile number two, because ohm is coming through, the card ohm, you know, like ohm, like that kind of energy. and it's kind of like stop, you know, stop like all the kind of back and forth and the defensiveness and, you know, stretching yourself to kind of fit into other people's roles that they want you to fit into and just saying, you know what, like simplicity, simplicity, stop, pull back and observe these dynamics with people because I feel like it is affecting your relationships and it's, 
it's making with the world card here it's making you mature pile number two talking about stretching your goals with relationships and relating to others and you know a lot of times in relationships we we act on outdated scripts scripts from our childhood etc and you know we can tell what those triggers are because we get very defensive there we get super defensive and there's something here about you know, this world card and in the Toph deck, it's actually called the universe, right? And the universal sound of ohm, just ohm, right? Pile number two, just kind of clearing your mind and sitting back and observing some of these dynamics, all right? Because there is a karmic cycle that is closing for you with the world and feeling like everything is on your shoulders and feeling like this is never going to change or these patterns keep repeating, like this needs to kind of get cleared out here. And we have Eclipse in Taurus, a change of heart, reevaluation card 26. There it is again with number 26 here. And, um, you know, you have a desire to be successful in your relationships and you'll feel accomplished when you work on that, I feel, pile number two, all right? And you have an intuitive awareness, but at the same time of what other people need, but at the same time that may kind of get sacrificed at the altar of conformity or conforming. You know what I'm saying, pile number two? And we have the eclipse in Taurus here, re-evaluating and observing, all right? And this change of heart, I feel like yoga, meditation, mindfulness, and you know, interestingly, I was listening to a video the other day of somebody who's like very bright, very philosophical person, and he was talking about how, you know, just yoga or meditation without any kind of a philosophy or sort of religious perspective, and, and he was saying religion in the non-naive kind of way, right? Like not just blindly following something, but having that sense of, you know, groundedness in your life, right? With this ohm is what's really going to help you guys. And, you know, a change of heart here. This is beautiful. This is so lovely. Look at the sunflowers. Look at the confidence in the pinks and the purples and the beautiful heart with the moon and that lovely attraction, you know, between you and you know and the people that you meet and I feel like sometimes you meet people and they have a change of heart or you have a change of heart because you know when we're kind of stretching to meet other people's needs we it creates this sense of well I don't really like this anymore or this isn't really good for me or you know or somebody may tell that say that to you too because you're, you're bending over backwards for them. And so you're like, well, why wouldn't you do that for me too? And you start to put pressure on them or vice versa. Someone could do this to you, pile number two, but it's about, you know, being ourselves from the very start. And, um, you know, cause what ends up happening is this big reevaluation and this big change of heart when, things get a little bit confusing with the moon energy, okay? We have animals locked, yeah, locked face off, okay? Do you feel free or stifled? Is, in your, is your situation making you feel caged or unhindered? Would you like to take some new risks, okay? And talking about taking a risk to be yourself and to, you know, back away, to have a change of heart, and to back away from some of these dynamics, okay? And I think it just kind of comes up uh, sometimes in your relationships pile number two, and it's not, you know, something that we can solve in one tarot reading, you know? And that's not to be like, oh, fuck, you know? Like, nothing is ever, like, I don't think that's it at all because you have the world card. This is something that you can master. This is something, this is a stretch goal, right? But it might be, like this kind of defensiveness or sharpness that happens where we get into fight, flight, freeze, fawn, when we get into those responses, when we're in an emotional conflict with someone, right? And then we start, start locking horns with them and then it becomes, you know, a big, a big issue, okay? And, um, 
you know, and I always, and I don't feel like it starts out that way, pile number two. It never starts out that way, but somehow it, it happens to be, okay, that way. And, um, yeah, and I'm not the one to tell you what to do or, you know, like what therapy, et cetera, et cetera. Maybe you've had couples therapy before or you've gone to therapy, but I am getting that sense for some people that maybe you, you have done this work on yourself and yet you find like some instinctual part of yourself is still pulled into this dynamic, okay? And um, yeah, it's, it's I, again, it's not something that you can't conquer with the world card here. You definitely can. It's just, what's, the, what's gonna be the thing that releases you from this? And we'll take a look at it. Humpback whale, singer, sing, sing he, Sing healing songs for the world. Oh, Om, that's coming right underneath Om. Sing healing songs for the world. Mantra, you know, mantra can really be a beautiful thing to open up energy, okay? Your inner navigation always guides you. Nothing can stop you or keep you from your goal, the world card. Align with your purpose and the power in your soul. Pile number two, okay? and um, humpback whale singer all right so maybe some of you are singers or you write or you use your voice in a particular way something very healing about mantras chanting it kind of releases the the mind you know because with the rabbit it's like we can overthink the wheels of the bus go round and round right <laughs> pile number two and um you know the world card like a karmic like circle of are we just existing to live in this karmic wheel? Or are we actually going to move through it? Okay. And, and I get that. Right. And, um, I think you're going to move through it. It says you, nothing can stop you from keep or keep you from your goal. Okay. Pile number two, nothing can stop you or keep you from it. And, um, you know, it's just working through, and I think some calming mantras, meditation, um, singing, etc. Sing a healing song for the world. Oh my God! And there's the world card in Ohm. Okay, and um, these are dynamics are fairly common. Pile number two. They are fairly common. They are dynamics that I've dealt with in my own life too. You know, there's the Taurus card right there. I'm a Taurus, so. I can relate, pile number two, like, you know, I mean, I've been there, done that myself, and, you know, my relationships are a lot more healthy today than they were, maybe they're a lot less than they used to be, I don't have as many people in my life, but my relationships are a lot healthier, and, you know, it's not quantity, but quality, okay, and quality is the number one thing with the world card, okay, it's not cheap whatever imitations, it's the real fucking thing, so let's go ahead for my pile number twos and see how can pile number two best work through this energy spirit? How can pile number two best work through this energy? Ace of Cups. Oh, isn't that, doesn't that feel good? <laughs> doesn't that feel good? Pile number two. I mean, I feel like that's just like something you could put on your mirror or put it on your ceiling. Doesn't that feel good, right? Doesn't it feel good? It's like a fresh cinnamon roll, you know? Doesn't that feel good? Sweet, gooey, yummy, sugary, you know, with, with like the latte of your dreams in a cinnamon roll. I mean, does it get any better than that, right? Pile number two, does it really get any better than that? Like, damn, you know? That's the yum, that's the yummy, yummy, good stuff, okay? And it's talking about, like, you know, the vulnerability to, like, let be ourselves, to show our true heart, and um, to just open up to, and I talked about, you know, as far as, like, you know, not religion in the sense of blindly following whatever, but also, you know, the Ace of Cups to me is kind of like that love and devotion for a higher power, you know, where do we put all that love? Where do we open our hearts up to love, okay? And love and devotion, pile number two. Very mature energy, I have to say, pile number two. Like, you know, this is gonna make you really, it's, it's really a maturing thing for you, I feel, and it's happening. We have the four of cups and luxury. So, you know, it's like, does it really get any better than this? You know, this is just, this is a lot of water, okay? And the humpback whale too with the water 
and um, going with the flow on things and really tapping into your emotions and how you feel and your intuition, your creativity. Sing a healing song for the world, okay? That we all can get this right because we all deal with this in the collective for sure. Let's go ahead and see what else here. We have, oh, the Queen of Cups. Oh my God, the empath, the psychic, the intuitive, the beautiful waters, the queen of the mighty waters, the beautiful queen of cups. Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, it's okay to ask for more. It's okay. It's like, you know, you. it's almost like I need to kind of be, speaking from your perspective, it's like I need to be kind of filled with love. I need to open to love. I need to let love pour into my soul on every level. Okay, and um, yeah, and and this Queen of Cups, it's funny with her because she seems, you know, in the top deck, she's kind of like the water is sort of overtaking her and it's the reflection and you can barely, you can sort of see her face way in the background there, okay, and you know, kind of how you've given and given and given to others, I feel, pile number two, or almost to the sense of diminishing your own self at times. And it's time to, it's time to let that love flow freely, okay? And not worry that it's too much with the Four of Cups. You know, it's luxury. The Four of Cups is luxury. Luxury is okay here, pile number two. It's, you know, it's opening you up. It's opening you up. It's a change of heart, okay? saying, I don't want this anymore. I've got to be my true self. And and I feel you have a huge heart for love, pile number two. You've got a huge loving heart, the whale, you know, that majestic creature. You have a huge loving heart for love. And, and the love lessons that you're going through in this lifetime are like collective love lessons. It's the big, it's the big time stuff. Okay, for sure. Ooh, the queen of swords. Now, I like this. I like this for a change of heart. I do. Because the queen of swords, I mean, I love the queen of cups, beautiful energy, but the queen of swords is like much more defined, much more boundary, much more vocal. Like, this is me, this is who I am, sing my song of truth. If it doesn't work, talking about a change of heart here with the Queen of Swords, I've had a change of heart, I reevaluated this relationship, and you know, I don't really like it anymore. I don't like kind of what it's done to me or how I feel when I'm in this connection, okay? It's using that voice, all right? Pile number two, and the ability to free yourself from connections that no longer serve you. Very important, right? And you're not just the Queen of Cups. You're not just the Queen of Swords. You're not just the heartless bitch cutting off the heads of any man who fucks up, I mean, or woman, whatever. And I love the Queen of Swords. I am a total Queen of Swords. I love heartless bitches all day, pile number two. And it's not just the Queen of Cups like pouring her heart out, doing everything for everyone else, right? It's the combination of, it's that beautiful combination of that you're growing into. You're still psychic, you're still intuitive, you still can feel people on a super deep level. And you know, you don't always have to be the one to come to people's rescue or fill their cup, okay? And um, people are gonna get there no matter what. And with the Queen of Swords, I see you becoming a lot more defined about who it is, what you want, what you like, and what works for you and what doesn't work for you, pile number two, okay? So can I get some advice for from pile number two's guides, please? Can I get some advice from pile number two's guides, please? Okay, yeah, I, I almost got this energy that they were kind of pleading with you, pile number two, you know, and we have the hermit on the bottom of the deck, and some of you guys may have been feeling like, just like, you know, this shit isn't going to change, right? And I feel like, I kind of feel like your guides are saying here, and I'm really drawn to this Cancer energy too with the Queen of Cups and then also on this Sun card it has all the signs of the Zodiac on it. I'm super drawn to the Cancer here. Um, but I feel like this Sun is just, your guides are saying like shining the light on this whole process that you've been going through 
and they're saying, you know, the fact that you've had a change of heart about some relationships, the fact that you've woken up to some of these dynamics, and the fact that you've been observing everything and kind of seeing it for what it is, is a very good thing. This is a very positive thing for you, pile number two. And it brings you closer to your goal to success towards the happiness that you are seeking, my dears, okay? My brothers and my sisters in pile number two, because I relate to your journey a lot and I understand that, okay? But your guides are saying, you know, your focus on this, your intensity on this, and also, you know, oh, just seeing it for what it is, illuminating it is going to bring you you know, out of your kind of cave and out of darkness into the light. Okay, pile number two. So thank you so much for being here. I hope that that was beneficial for you. I hope that you got some, you know, tips and motivations and that I really enjoyed reading for you, pile number two. And do leave me a comment, like, share, subscribe if you enjoyed my my video and your reading pile number two. And I hope to see you again soon. Take care my loves. All right, let's go ahead and move into pile number three. Okay, pile number three. Let's do it. Let's do it. Pile number three, welcome to your reading. You chose the white tea light and today's reading is called what is keeping you from finding your soulmate or true love? This was a subscriber request reading. And, you know, this reading is not to, you know, depress people or dissuade people. It's to lift people up. It's to, you know, show the truth. It's to help us get closer to our own mastery. And, um, yeah, and again, use discernment when you watch any tarot video and only take what resonates for you, but also keep an open mind. Keep an open mind, right? Pile number three. And so let's go ahead and get into it, my loves. And let's see, any other announcements? No, I think that's about it. There won't be any extended readings today, but let's go ahead and drop into the energy. Spirits, angels, and guides for my beautiful pile number threes, please connect me to their loving energy. And I almost said the loving energy of your person, all right? Because I feel some of you may have been with someone or there is someone on your mind. I just did the sign of the cross over me. <laughs> so I don't know if some of you guys are like, you know, like biting your, biting your thumb a little bit and doing the sign of the cross over you and being like, let this be good. Let there be light, Natalie. <laughs> okay, pile number three. I feel your need to really illuminate this, okay? And um, I feel some of you in pile number three have had substantial relationships or have had, you know, connections that have been, have felt very substantial to you is also what I'm getting here, okay? And you, some of you in pile number three, you may have already had a soulmate in your life before. And you know, we can have more than one soulmate in a lifetime for sure. You know, different people come through our life at different times. I know everyone is focused on that one, one person to meet forever. But, um, you know, I feel like for you guys, it may be like, hey, you know, I met this person and it was amazing. And, you know, but it's been, it's been a journey, hasn't it? Pile number three, it's been a journey. And I am seeing the energy of New Zealand or um, Australia. I'm also feeling the name Amanda here too. Um, let's, or the A names, for A names that are watching this, first name, last name, or middle name, or name of your person. Let's see what else I can get. I'm also getting this roller coaster feeling, this feeling of being on a roller coaster you know, when your stomach kind of drops and it's this very exciting feeling. I feel you guys have been in love before pile number three, okay? And beautifully, in fact, I feel pile number three, maybe more than once in your life as well, okay? And that's a huge blessing, pile number three. Like, you know, I mean, obviously, like we want to keep the good times rolling, you know, roll that dice, right? <laughs> pile number three, but let's go ahead. I'm also getting chicory, chicory is that a type of herb or something that you use when you're cooking um or is that a place or something i'm also getting chicory 
Okay, let's see if I can get anything else. Maybe like basil and mint as well. Does somebody here have that in their garden? Is that been on someone's mind lately? Um, I feel like maybe like tea or something like that, like a basil tea or mint tea could be lovely. Uh, ooh, mint chocolate. Nice, thank you, spirit. <laughs> mint chocolate, I love it. I love it. I'm also getting the energy of people going to school, whether it's your kids are going to school or you're going to school, you're taking a class, but I'm getting that energy. Pile number three, queen of cups on the bottom of the deck. Can I get a hell? Yeah. Pile number three. <laughs> All right, you guys, excellent energy. Let's go ahead and see for my beautiful pile number threes. What is keeping you from finding your soulmate or true love? Repetition. Okay. Okay. There it is. Yeah, and you know, you have the white tea light and you see all the phases of the moon here and she, her face is like pretty white and she looks like half of her face is kind of eclipsed here and you know, some repetition. So maybe some of you dealing with some Scorpios, Cancers or Sagittarius's is also what I see here, possibly a Pisces too. Um, you know, repetition, right? And I spoke of you guys having like, you know, you've already had some soulmates in and out of your life. And just because it ends badly doesn't mean, or if it ended on a not a great note, doesn't mean that it wasn't a soulmate. It's just, you know, time's up. You know, if it was an abusive situation, obviously I'm not commenting on that. But what I'm saying is, you know, like time's up, right? If certain people, certain phases of your life, they were with you, but then after that, it was like, okay, time's up and kind of feeling um, and I feel like with this, you guys could be Pisces here too. I feel like you go with the flow and the phases of your life, but it's also frustrating because it's like, oh, this again, you know, at times. Four, four, it's a master number, pile number three. It says, I am supported, okay? Your angels are encouraging you to continue on your present life path with diligence and determination and even greater success will come in the future. I am supported. Continue on that path, even though it's rocky, even though it's like, oh, this again, this again, oh, I got that feeling, and then I broke my heart, and then da da da, right? Uh, master number, Pisces energy, 44, we experiencing everything under the sun here in pile number three. Ooh, we have the Empress. Ooh, the hills are alive with the sound of music. All right, resting in your heart. If it feels so good, why does it feel so bad, right? <laughs> Pile number three, boy. Um, but with the Empress, I mean, talk about, yeah, like, you know, having been loved, pile number three, having been loved, having been worshiped like the goddess that you are, or, you know, or like at the same time, maybe being like, what, what are you talking about, Natalie? Where is this person at? <laughs> I love the hands, the hands are out here, like reach, you know, I mean, definitely a lot of people, a lot of people attracted to your energy, I feel, pile number three. Like, very, very um, pleasing to the eye, you are pile number three, or your voice, or your eyes, or your look, or just your big, beautiful heart, pile number three, okay? Um, very impressive to others with the Empress, okay? And your angels are saying, you know, continue on your present life path because you're, you are supported in what you're doing right now. Let's see, we have clear quartz, heal. I love the white tea light. There we are, baby, bring it on. Healing, all right, support healing. You're doing it, pile number three. I just have to say, love your energy, love your pile. And you know, you are a love beam in the universe, pile number three. You attract and pull in love. You are the essence of love, pile number three. I want you to know that, okay? Your heart, crystal clear quartz, open, ready to heal, ready to get on with it, okay? Definitely ready to get on with it. There's a few scratches, there's a few, you know, nicks and crannies here and there, but that's what makes it interesting, okay? <laughs> that's what makes the roller coaster worth it. Okay, we have greed. You are too attached to things in an excessive way. Nothing good comes out of it, okay? And you know, with this repetition, it's like holding, you know, wanting to hold on to things and 
you know, wanting to keep things going, even though they kind of pass their relevance or they're kind of past their time, you can feel it. You can kind of feel it. You're intuitive. I know you are pile number three when something is kind of like trickling out. It's like, eh, you know, and trickling out and just not just being okay with it, right? Just going into the surrender, going into the flow. All right, you are supported, you are loved, pile number three. We have addictions. Think about the emotions you are trying to cover up, deal with those emotions, process, heal, and release them. Yeah, you know, and you guys may have dealt with people in the past who had addictions or you had your own journey with that, or you know, you've been through life's ups and downs and phases and you've had different kinds of people that you've loved in your life and, um, you know, and I feel like because you've had love pile number three, you may think that it's kind of done for you or that that was kind of it or, you know, people only ever really get like this many loves and then it's kind of like eh, anything after that is just sort of worn down or worn out. And I, that's not true, pile number three, okay? That's not true for you. Like I said, you're a great big gigantic love beam, all right? And your, your brilliance is showing, all right? So don't try to cover yourself up and, you know, don't try to hide who you are out of shame or anything else, pile number three, okay? Because, you know, you're looking good and it's okay if you've had other loves or other things in your life. You aren't greedy. You aren't like taking from the pot too many times. It's not like you ate too many cookies, pile number three. I don't know, maybe you did, but <laughs> when it comes to love, like love is abundance. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's around us everywhere. Okay. And we have earth. All right. With the Empress energy here, we could have Libra or Taurus, but earth. Okay. And those times when you feel like, oh, I'm being like kind of greedy or I want a lot of someone's time or, you know, a lot of times too, if you've dealt with people that have addictions, it's like, well, can't you just clean it, right? Can't you just kind of get through it and be done with it once you do it for me, you know? But people are all kind of on their own path and things happen in phases and in their own time, as you know, pile number three. I know you know this, okay? So it really doesn't do any good to kind of like try to go back to things or that are clearly kind of run their course is what I feel. We have moon in Virgo and contentment. The chance to boost health and vitality leads to satisfaction. Talking about health and moon and Virgo here and being that shining star in the sky. And um, I feel like what you guys really want is someone who, you know, will, someone who's healthy, both mentally, physically, and emotionally, and is ready to show up and do the work, and someone who's content with their life, right? Somebody who's stable and content with their life. Not somebody who just keeps trying to kind of push the envelope and keep running after, you know, things things that they don't need to be running after, all right? And you guys may have been around people like that because you're radiating, the, radiating the, that Empress energy. You may have been around people that, uh, really kind of wanted wanted all of that empress energy from you, okay? And you guys are looking for someone who's very healthy and content with their life and who's very healthy mentally, emotionally, physically, and spiritually, all right? And um, it's okay if people have a couple chinks or in their armor or have, you know, a few areas where there's a little crack here or there. You don't judge. You don't mind pile number three, I, don't, I feel. It's just you know, some of these people that you had in your past could have been like selfish and they could have, you know, not really been equal partners with you or not super available or healthy for you. Okay. And you're looking for something a lot more stable Four, four. It's a big like stability number. Okay. Talking about diligence and determination. We have play. Find, for, find time to incorporate play into your everyday life. Allow your inner child to experience joy. Yeah, that was the roller coaster energy at the beginning of the reading that I was getting. It was like, woo, having fun. You deserve to be happy and be joyful around others. Yeah, not always having to take care of everyone else, not always having to worry about everyone else. 
you know, it's more like, let's just enjoy the time that we have together. Okay. Something simple in that way. Fox and clever, but look at these two foxes. They're so happy together. And you know, to me, this is partnership right here. You are swift and smart. Solutions to problems are easily found. Always listen to your instincts. Resources surround you. Be open to romance. Be open to romance. It literally says that pile number three, okay? And Foxy Foxy, Foxy Foxy Brown over here, pile number three, um, meeting someone who's really foxy that you're super attracted to. And you're like two peas in a pod. And if you think, you know what, I've repeated a lot of patterns, being with people who were selfish or you know, only focused on what they wanted and they weren't very mature. And I just wanna meet someone who's smart and healthy, healthy for me emotionally, physically, and mentally. Even if in the past, I, I feel you're very non-judgmental, pile number three, that you're like, you can understand people on a deeper level with the Fox energy, like where people have been and where they are headed, okay? Which I love, pile number three, I love that for you. So let's go ahead for my pile number threes. Something innocent about you too, even if you've been around the block a few times, pile number three, there's an innocence, I feel, and you know, a deep satisfaction here for you. And I do think there is a partnership for you. Somebody who's fun and playful and clever, smart, healthy in both body, mind, and soul, okay? And you know, that's a partner deserving of the Empress, okay, pile number three. So let's go ahead and see, how does pile number three call this energy into their life spirit? How do they call it in? We have eight of cups, okay, time to let go of the past right? Time to, time to let go of the past and um, walk away, okay? And time for bigger and better things. I'm seeing the letter V here too, V um, as a letter, first name or last name, middle name, you or your person, um, or someone from your past, okay? But walking away from something, pile number three, and, and walking, this eight of cups is very non-threatening. It's, it's very calm and peaceful, actually. It's like, like knowing, hey, I did everything I could in this situation. Hey, you know, I, I tried as much as I could, and I gotta, I gotta move on, you know? You know, Papa or Mama was a, was a rolling train. What is that song? What is that song? I'm sorry, I'm channeling. I can't think of anything. But yeah, I can't think of the words to anything. It was a rolling train or whatever. It was Papa or Mama, right? But yeah, I feel it's just like, hey, you know what? I tried and I'm, I'm, I've got peace in my soul. And it's I did all the work I could here. Now it's time for me to move forward. All right, letting go. We have the Seven of Pentacles. All right, nurturing nurturing something and growing it even if at times it's like not you feel like it's not going anywhere okay and um yeah and there's a lot of patience with the seven of pentacles too especially when you start something new and you're getting to know someone new and you know taking it easy right with this earth energy and seven of pentacles taking it slow taking it easy um, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Well, and I like how the roots are kind of like coming together, right? Everyone is an individual and yet the roots kind of come together and form this new energy. And of course, it looks like here, like he's blessing the plant, like he's taking care of it and he's blessing it. And to me, this is kind of like a future partner for you, pile number three, like somebody who blesses the relationship and takes care of it. Somebody who like is mature enough, somebody who can put effort and energy, somebody who's healthy mentally, physically, emotionally, like I said, okay? And because we have seven and eight here, I feel, you know, in the next seven to eight months, you could see this type of person sort of coming into your life. I do feel with these two foxes here, yeah, you know, it's, it's gonna be sexy too. Don't worry about it, pile number three. We have the Knight of Swords here, so, yeah, I mean, this Knight of Swords is like, I better hurry up and catch this before it gets out of hand or before it 
takes off without me. Like I better go and catch this train, okay? I better go and make this happen before my time window kind of dissolves, all right? And yeah, I better go and and talk to pile number three. I better go and see them. I better, you know, I better, I better make something happen here. Otherwise, pile number three is walking away. We have four of pentacles, and I feel like with someone in your past, pile number three, it's like they can say whatever they want or come back, and this person may be kind of in and out of your life at times, but I feel like you guys are like, no, you know, like you're just like, no, with this four of pentacles, and you're like, I've had enough of that. No, I'm not going to relive that, obviously, and, you know, I, I'm going to wait. And I'm going to hold back and wait until I find that person that's good for me, okay? And the thing is, though, with the Knight of Swords and the Fox energy and clever is I would say if you meet someone who is very clever and seems like, ah, oh, they just talk in BS, do they really mean what they say? They seem like they're not super, like... Um, what's the word? What is the word I'm thinking of? It's the, um, damn it. Pile number three. I can't think of it. I didn't get that. Whoa. Did again? Holy shit. Oh my God. Pile number three. That was my Siri. To to Be quiet, Siri. <laughs> oh no. Pile number three. That scared me. I got the chills. I so got the chills. Okay. If somebody seems like a little too fresh or a little too cutesy, okay, I can't think of the right word I wanted to use, but you know what I mean, a little too fresh or a little too cutesy, or, you know, try to give them a little bit of a chance because this fox, I think you may find that even though they may be like charming or cutesy in a way, or when you meet them, you might not think that they're being very sincere. That's the word I was thinking of. They're not being very sincere or they're just kind of like other people in the past who are just kind of in and out of your life or things didn't work out, whatever. I, I, I think like try to talk to this person a little bit, pile number three. All right. And if they're fun and interesting and playful and clever but they also have like this earth energy about them where they take things slow and they they nurture things. Maybe they garden, all right? Maybe they have plants. Maybe they love plants. Maybe they love animals, all right? Look for somebody like that. Somebody who's fun and clever and charming, but also like knows how to tend to things, okay? And um, somebody who's very good at like fixing things, I see too, or... Um, even if they're not good at fixing things, they'll try. They would absolutely be willing to help you, okay? And that's the kind of like energy that I am feeling is coming for you, okay? Pile number three, and this could be like in the next seven to eight months and that you could be meeting this person. Spirits, angels, and guides, can you give me any information here or any advice for my pile number threes when it comes to attracting love? And don't hold back, okay? Don't hold back is what they're saying. Um, I love you letting go of the past pile number three. I love that you're doing that. I think it's the right move. But when you meet someone new and the conversation starts, try not to hold back too much, okay? Try to, try to be playful back, all right? Let's go ahead and see what advice does spirit have here. We have the two of swords. So you're not going to even know it's coming, pile number three. Like spirit has been purposefully kind of keeping you in the dark a little bit as you, because, you know, I feel like you're a curious person, pile number three. And it's not like they're keeping you in the dark. It's like they almost, it's almost fun. It, it's like, I see the smile on your face. It's unexpected. It's fun. When it happens, it happens. It's like in the moment, you'll know, you'll know it in your, you know it in your gut. You'll know it. Um, you know, even if you had your, your a blindfold on and your hands tied behind your back, if you could like smell a person and hear their voice and the way that they talk and the pattern of their speech, you would know pile number three, you would know. Okay. And, um, that's what you want to trust. 
is what I feel. And that's what spirit is saying. And listen to us is also what spirit is saying with the two of swords. Okay. Listen to us because, you know, try not to let your mind like run away with you. Just listen to us and go with your gut. Go with that procedure. Like I told you, what if you were blindfolded and your hands behind your back, but you heard someone's voice, you heard their laugh, you could smell, you know, you could smell their skin or smell their cologne. Like what is your gut reaction to that, right? Pile number three, interesting, pheromones, things like that. Let's see what else here. Nine of pentacles, all right? Yeah, I mean, you guys could actually meet someone at work or during what you do for a living or as a result of how you make your income, all right? Especially for those of you that are in like the ser any type of a service industry. And you, there may be somebody that actually already likes you or has a crush on you or wants to try to get your attention or thinks that you're beautiful, loves your smile or your lips, I feel, pile number three. And you guys just might be like, oh yeah, I know who that is. You know, like that's so-and-so that comes in and whatever, or that's so-and-so that flirts with me sometimes, or that's so-and-so that complimented me on whatever. And yeah, I feel like spirit is saying there needs to be something kind of wholesome in the way that this person is. All right. There needs to be something a little bit wholesome and, um, yeah, and with a chariot on the bottom of the deck, I feel like your love life is going to be speeding up. If it's been a little bit stalled lately and you felt a little bored with things, pile number three, I do think there's going to be somebody in your vicinity that you're going to be like, ah, oh, I know who you're talking about, Natalie. Like, uh, or within the next seven to eight months, you're going to be like, okay, Natalie, like, I now I know who you were talking about, <laughs> okay? So yeah, and I see your love life is really going to speed up. And um, I feel some of you guys, when you feel it kind of speeding up, you might be a little bit nervous at first, okay? Going out with this person, seeing them, talking to them. But I do feel like this person's gonna really put you at ease. Okay, pile number three, I do. So don't be nervous and, you know, just keep, Keep moving forward, pile number three. You're doing so good. And um, your guides are like, we can't tell you everything because we know how curious you get, but we can give you little hints. And Natalie has given you little hints during this entire reading. So now it's up for, to you to kind of just reach for it. Okay, pile number three. So thank you so much, my loves. I hope everyone enjoyed their readings. Oop, the phone is is moving <laughs> earthquake status all right see you again soon pile number three take care